So John the Baptist was baptizing people in the Jordan River. And this was a way for people to repent of their sins, like being washed, to turn away and leave their sins behind and to try to live a life that was worthy of the kingdom of God. Then in all four of our Gospels, Jesus enters the scene, his public entrance into the world as an adult is when he is baptized by John in the River Jordan. This is an odd event. This event, Jesus being baptized, which is an act of repenting of your sins, if this seems odd to you, you are not alone. So the question we might ask is why was Jesus baptized? He is without sin. Who are the other people coming down to be baptized? Well, they're sinners who know that they're sinners and they're trying to repent of their sins. If you thought this is weird, you're not alone. In fact, John himself thought this. John the Baptist himself said, I'm the one that needs to be baptized by you, Jesus. Why do you come to me? He is shocked and perplexed and surprised. It doesn't make sense to him. Or the meaning of it is hidden from him. In fact, right before our gospel passage today in the gospel of Matthew, John says, I baptize you, he's talking to the people he's baptizing, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So we today and John the Baptist of old think this is just not right that Jesus is baptized. But Jesus replies to John, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. This is the first Sunday of the season that's called Epiphany. Epiphany is about something hidden that is made known, is revealed, is shown. As Paul writes in our epistle today, this mystery is something that is hidden and then made known to the people. And specifically, the season of Epiphany is about the revealing, the making known of who Jesus is his identity as the Son of God and what he came to do. These are things that are not obvious to us, that don't initially make sense. There's something that had to be revealed. And so I would suggest that we should see into the mystery of Jesus' baptism <laughs> at the beginning of his earthly ministry, that we should see this in the light of the end of Jesus' ministry, his earthly ministry. Because indeed, we might just as well ask, why does Jesus die on the cross? Why is he executed as a criminal? He's not a criminal. He's without sin. Part of what is being revealed in Jesus' baptism in this season of Epiphany is what Jesus came to do and how he came to do it. The mysterious nature of his baptism points to the mystery of his mission and ultimately to the mystery of the cross. His baptizing us, baptizing people with the Holy Spirit and fire comes through his coming to us 
in our place. He comes into the place precisely of sinful man, of sinful humanity. He comes to us in our place and takes our place. He comes to the place of sinners. He comes to us in the Jordan. He comes to us as we come as sinners who know we are sinners, know there's something wrong and that we seek to repent. And he meets us precisely there. Not after we have gotten ourselves together. This is exactly how things are made right. These are how things are made just. How all righteousness is fulfilled. This is how Jesus does that. The prophet Isaiah speaks of this particular how in our passage when he says, A bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. It's talking about things that are weak, broken, or on the, on the verge of just about not even existing at all. That he is gentle with those things. That he comes to the sinner, to the one who is low, and he becomes lowly himself. The Lord comes to us as a servant This was shocking to his apostles and to his disciples of old. And we shouldn't be surprised if it's surprising to us. He doesn't come to crush us down and condemn us, but to care for our brokenness in a gentle way and to truly lift it up. He comes, as Isaiah writes, to the prisoners who sit in darkness. He comes into the prison and he brings them out. He comes into the dark waters with us and he does the washing that we need by taking our place there. And this reveals God and reveals the love of of God. The baptism of our Lord that we celebrate today is also celebrated as the explicit revelation of God as the Trinity, as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew writes, just as he, the Son, came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. God shows himself in Jesus as having a life That is a life of love, even within God himself. And the baptism of our Lord, in the baptism of our Lord, the love of God is revealed to us. It is a love that descends to the depths. It is a love that descends to the abyss of whatever distance or alienation or brokenness that we have brought about, that we find ourselves in. Anything our pride and rebellion has done, his love descends deeper. It comes precisely to where the penitent sinner is. God the Father does not wait for us simply at home to return but he goes by sending his son into the far country of wherever we are in our sin. In our baptism, Jesus joins us and he takes us into his life and takes us home with him from death to life. 
Let us today behold and live within the mystery of God's love for us, revealed and made manifest in the baptism of our Lord. And let us boldly confess him as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you.